So let's take apart the Viper Signature Edition Mini and then give it away. We'll take apart all the pieces, see how it's constructed, weigh every bit. And I'll give my thoughts on its build quality at the end. We'll see whether we think it's going to be worth your 280 pounds or even more if you got a pay like I did because you didn't get one at the launch. So let's check it out. 49 grams. One thing you notice, one thing I noticed right away is these are the stock skates for the Viper. They're not anything for the Viper Mini or this SE edition doesn't have its own skates. I think that instantly annoyed me is you can't put any of the skates on it because it's been, um, it's had basically the ridges put into the skate base. You could have put a longer skate on there, it'd have been nice at the front, but no, they've got to sand the base. <sighs> Shame. Around it, but quite high. The skates 0 0.9, 0 0.8 is normal. The skates smaller on the front than they are on the back, aren't they? Aren't they? Yeah, they're curved on the back as well, not on the front, though. Four. Might check the other one as well, just to see. Don't know, maybe the caliper's shafted, but they look a little bit smaller on the front, a bit thinner. So, screw wise, we're looking at two at the rear bar, looks like. These, are these two here, but none at the front. It's good to see, and they drilled some holes in it, nice. Right, screwdriver, hmm. You reckon it's the same as the final mouth? Let's go get one that I use for that one, so. And we've been using the final mouse. You're right, same one. It's a much short screw, so and the final mouse, how short that screw is. there when you do this. Press at the front, I feel like it's going to snap in. And we can just pull vipers up, but there we go. Just got to pull it up and pray for clips. The last viper didn't have that on it. The last viper, they uh, they uh, put the screws in the inside of the PCB, but if you think about where they're going to put the PCB screws, like if you don't have these two pins at the back, they're going to have to go maybe under the PCB, I don't know. You could put them inside here, this part, because they haven't got really escaped. I'm going to escape it. But, hmm. I need to take that skate off. Fuck. <laughs> Come back for that side. How they've constructed the buttons on this. Interesting side button. So, at least they've used screws on this one. It's a bonus because they haven't in the recent ones have been using plastic rivets. You know what they look like. We have a Viper here we've modded, took apart, but oh, sorry, Death Adder. You can see how they used to connect. These are how they connect the normal buttons on the Death Adder at the minute and the Viper V2. These fucking plastic rivets. So at least they've screwed these in. I guess they have to because of the magnesium. So anyway, they could fuse it together. And then you've got this post that it screws into here on it. It's pretty thin, the magnesium. Look how thin that is. I mean, that is a thin piece of magnesium, thinner than the final mouse. I mean, it's thin, look at that. Side buttons, mm, they're using uh, micro side switches, so that's why they don't feel great. They've got a weird 
slightly different design for the side buttons. Standard plunger setup. Nothing, uh, nothing different there. But they've kept the uh, they've kept the post into the final mouse doesn't have the post to stop the lateral movement. So they've done that. They kept it pretty standard. So my pet hate now we've got to switch to a different screwdriver because for some reason they use different screws in the base. I don't know why. So there's two screws in this piece. You got one here. And the other ones here. Same switch as the G Pro Superlight Norse. In terms of the connectors, what brand are they? You can see they've got the, the little side tails on. So we'll shame they put full size switches in, but final mouse didn't either. It's a bit of a cop out in my opinion, but the 49 grams, I thought they might have used uh, full size switches. What brand are these? Different brand. I got my eyes out. Hmm, interesting. How will they tell? They're like, uh, got something on them. R I D E W Y N D, I think. So like the PCB is glued into this. So. That cable was attached as well to the actual side button. So. It looks like they've got a similar design to the G Pro X with a little bit of a PCB on the back. And then we've got their side buttons here. Can't tell if they glued these in. It looks like they got like a little hook here, a hooks over it. And then here they've got the other bits, it seems. Right, we'll come back to the side buttons because uh, they don't seem to be going off at the minute. So, what we have here is two screws. So this is interesting, it's almost a plastic insert into magnesium. See that? Don't have to butcher, didn't you, everyone? That's it. <laughs> like enthusiasm. But it's got a plastic insert and a magnesium cap, that looks like that's what I would say. You can tell it's plastic because that's not. I do like the razor bit on the front, it always looks pretty cool, I think. It's exactly the same. Three grams, fucking hell. That's a heavy button. That's where some of the weight is. Holy shit, that's heavy. They've nicely trimmed out this shell, look at that. I don't know. It's, it's just interesting to see they didn't put magnesium in. I, I'm kind of torn between the two, I think. Final Mouse had a bad button design, to be fair, mains. Caused them a lot of problems, a lot stiffer. That's why they're not stiff, because they're not, they're not magnesium. Final Mouse, had this is all magnesium on Final Mouse. In fact, they're joined together like that, the Final Mouse style. Like. And they've got limited flex, whereas Razor's kind of gone for a bit of a plastic insert with a magnesium cover. I don't know. The side buttons are permanently fixed, I think. Razor's traditional style now at the minute of uh, welding everything in. So I have to wait with the side button. The side button is normally a gram, so if you take that off, you probably get a good idea of what the shell weighs. That's what the shell looks like. Then. Got any project numbers in it? Number sometimes I do got A13 at the front. Is the number 19 or 13? Looks like 13. It could be 18. Definitely feels like 15 grams. Close. You can see the uh, lube on the scroll. That's interesting for the antenna. Where the antenna is? I assume that's the antenna. Interesting. Um, right, so it looks like we've got three screws. One here, here, and here. Different screw, same type, but different type of screw. Got quite a few screws in this as well, Razor, to be fair. A 
is the beast. This is quite thin. But... You don't want a short ass cable, that's how short that cable is. It's not the uh, standard 1.5mm either. Yeah, not need much tape, nice. Cut that down to a min. Here's the battery. We've got a 230 milliamp, 3.7 volt. That's pretty big for 230. I thought a battery to be fair. Right, so the PCB now I've got one more screw actually here. Shame that they always call them something the base is um, Razor. Sabine, Project Sabine, isn't it? Nice tiny ass PCB which we'll measure up in a minute. Is the scroll world a bit closer? You won't find a replacement scroll wheel for this to turn that now. Might be able to put a piece of rubber over it though if you wanted to make it a bit um a bit grippier. Oh, fucking okay, one point eight. That was light as I thought. So people were saying about the Optomex, so you can see the connection that's identical to all the other Razor Optomex connectors. So we can easily just ping these out. So you can put your Gen 2, Gen 3, or Gen 1s, whatever you want out. Here we go, PCB. It's small. That's where Final Mouth should have done a bit more on their PCB work, I think. Got a uh, customized um, scroll clip there, though. That's a bit of a different one to find. And we're using the Riesha, is it? 11? I've never heard of that brand. Who the hell is that? 11 mil. Check the MC you out. Old Man Vision is enabled. It's so hard to read. 852840 and the sensors are PAW 3950 DM-T5QU. So here's the base. Pretty much no effort in weight reduction. It's a bit thin here, man. It's even that thin. I thought it was a bit thinner. I don't understand why they didn't like weight reduce the base a bit more. These little holes are like a suggestion. They might didn't do the rear ones though, because that didn't do around here. Didn't do under the label. Just got that skate. <laughs> Forgot that skate. So my final thoughts, I guess, on this teardown after that is like, weight-wise, I think they did a pretty good job on the bait and the shell, I'd say. Like the, that's pretty nice. They've optimised that and left the sides full for people. I think the buttons are a bit weird with the combination of, magne of magnesium and plastic, but I get why they've done that to allow them to connect because I use the same stable button mechanism. It's still got wobble in it, so it didn't really help. Didn't really help them. The base is bad because it definitely took some more weight in the base. They haven't like they made a little effort in the base. And given this cut out on the back design, I think they should have done a bit more, a bit more effort. I like the battery cover on this because it hides all the internals. Side buttons are weird. Got a weird construction on it. They also don't come out very easily. They're using micro side buttons, which is a bit of a shame. 
Scroll wheel's nice, but maybe a little bit slippy. Never find any replacement for it. Batteries, I can somewhere it's 240 milliamp, 230 milliamp, sorry. Because um, it's got 4K polling, and we used the uh, HTX last night, and that just destroyed it the other night. Just destroyed the battery in under eight hours. About eight hours, sorry, and we used between 4K, 2K, and 1K, so need a slightly big one. Um, PCB's nice. They've used a weird encoder that I've never heard of. Maybe it's me and a slightly higher uh, custom switch, which might be difficult if it breaks for people, but interesting design as well on the wireless antenna. Get some nice skate options, but again, they've uh, made it so you have to sand the base if you don't put anything else on but raise the skates, which is a bit of a shame. They're not really listening to the market there, I think. Other than that, not bad. Worth $280? Fuck no.